Come on, welcome Alan Myers. Today, I want to talk about a term. It's out there. Most people don't understand its history, its importance. Natural born citizen. Before we get into it, I want to get back into the history of it. There was a man named Emmerich de Vittel, sometimes referred to as Emmer, but Emmerich de Vittel, Swiss diplomat. He wrote a book called The Law of Nations. You, I got a copy of it. You can get it. It was published in French in 1758. It was published in English in 1760. If you go to chapter 19, section 212, this is where you will encounter natural born citizen. This is what it says. The natives or natural born citizens are those born in the country of parents who are citizens. Now later on, he, he retracted about the place of birth but it's the parents who are citizens. He continues, as the society cannot exist and perpetuate itself otherwise than by the children of the citizens. Those children naturally follow the condition of their fathers and succeed to all their rights. What I get out of this is that to be a natural born citizen, think about this for a moment. We're talking about the 1750s, 60s, and eventually when we get to the Constitution, 1780s. What were the political rights of women at that time? None. When David Tells talks about citizens, he's talking about men. When he talks about children, he's talking about children. When he's talking about citizens, he uses plurals. But when he, fought, when he finishes up his statement, those children naturally follow the condition of their fathers. That's telling me to be a natural born citizen at its most limited definition. To be a natural born citizen of the United States, your father has to be a citizen at the time of your birth. Done. I would prefer both parents. But if you go back to this definition, it's the father. Why does this end? There are many instances, and I'll name a few, where during the time of the Constitutional Convention and during the ratification, David Tell was known. It is also known that three copies of the Law of Nations was at the convention. Ben Franklin brought two, one in English, one in French. So why does this matter? Why does the, these three words matter? Natural, born, citizen because it's in only one place in the constitution now we get to what you have to be to be eligible for the office of president it's in the constitution article 2 section 1 clause 5 it begins this way no person except how definite is that Pretty, pretty definite? Any vagueness there? Any room for broad interpretation? I don't think so. No person except a natural born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to the office of president. What came first is natural born citizen. The reason they had to put the other one in is because you also had to be 35 years of age and 14 years of residence. No one at that time who was that old, well, there was no one that, that could be a natural born citizen and be that old. So they, you had to be a citizen. Natural born citizen was put in there specifically because they wanted the person at the top executing the laws to have full allegiance to America. Remember the time frame. They just finished the revolution. They tried it under the existing under the Articles of Confederation and it didn't work out well. 
There were Tories, people who were aligned with the monarchy. They were there during the war, they were thereafter. They did not want somebody like that who had mixed allegiances. Natural born citizen is only one place in the Constitution. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5. The, the eligibility to become president. And that's how important it is. People will come back and say, well, you know, citizen. It's, it's a, no. Citizen for the House. Citizen for the Senate. Natural born citizen for president. Finally, the last argument, I've had this shoved in my face a few times because I don't know what I'm talking about. And that is the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment came, of course, after the 13th Amendment, free the slaves. It came after the Dred Scott case. And the key part, the 14th Amendment is pretty long. The key part is in Section 1 of the 14th Amendment. And it says, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and that's where people stop reading. What they need to continue on is, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. This is about being a citizen, which is not the same. And being subject to the jurisdiction thereof. If your parents are from another country or countries, and you're born here, your parents aren't citizens. So how are you, the baby, fully subject to the jurisdiction of the United States? You're not. This is ignored. The term natural born citizen is very specific. It's part of the eligibility requirements to be president. Yet where is media on this one? Nowhere. Is the Constitution actually important here? What? Okay. We, the people, it is coming down to us. We need to educate our families, our friends, neighbors, co-workers. we got to get this out. And the last, regardless of what happens in the election, the last stop would be getting into contact with the electors from our state and let them know this person is not eligible in any way, shape, or form. How would that apply to Kamala Harris? Because her background is, I believe she was born, help me out, I believe she was the, born in Canada, but no. no. The, the birth certificate says she was born in Oakland. Okay. Father is from Jamaica. Mom is from India. The They were students at the time which means neither parent was a citizen of the United States. Natural born citizen is not about location. It is about heritage. It is about allegiance. As David Tell said, children naturally follow their fathers. He's talking politically, socially. I think it, we probably need an amendment to the Constitution to finally get this spelled out, and I would like it to have both mother and father be citizens. But this is about being, having an allegiance to the country. You're not gonna get that from somebody who one parent is from J Jamaica, another from India. The parents have some interesting history. She did spend some time in Canada. But to the point, it's not where you're born. It's who your parents are, what your allegiance to. And this whitewashing, this pushing away that, oh, you know, citizen, natural born citizen, they're the same thing. Well, if they're the same thing, why in the require the eligibility requirements for the House and the Senate, it just says citizen. But in Article 2 for president, it says what? natural born, no person except. This is absolutely definite. And 
And to me, what was talking about with the party politics and the platform, let's all just go back to 1776. Who got her down? There were no parties. There was either pa Patriots, Tories, or I'll go wherever I'm told to go. And it's the Patriots that got it done. They didn't have phones, planes, trains, cars, internet. They had taverns and horses. They got it done. This is what we need to return to. We, the people, need to get directly involved, whether it's local, state, national. Because people, as my friend has been all over this one state back east, very, knows all the big monkey knocks, and he has either been pushed away or told he was wrong. They won't say why. And the other comment he received was, Bob, don't, don't do this. This is a distraction. We need to focus on the economy, immigration, you know, on uh, inflation. Having somebody run for the highest elected office in the country who's not eligible, this is a distraction? I don't think so. And this is what I'm finding, which I really don't like. And this is why I take the position I'm a student. I study, I research, I'm very interested. Uh, do you know the term PETA, P-I-T-A, pain in the, yeah, those are the kind of questions I ask. But I want to learn, and I want to share. I don't want to be an expert. Because I find those people stop thinking. They stop inquiring. Quick little story. I know I get to you. And I met at a party with six other families. We all know each other. We've known each other for a long time. And I'm sitting down, and it's in the context of the conversation. It's just months and months ago. And I said, well, she's not a natural born citizen. She's not eligible. That's the way I said it. I didn't say it hostile. I didn't say it mean. I met a very well-educated person. Who are you referring to? Come, come on. I didn't use the name. Yeah. She's not a natural born citizen. She's not eligible. And this guy I've known for 25 years looks at me and goes, you're wrong. Not in a nice tone. So I stay in my nice tone and I say, well, would you like to discuss this? No. <laughs> then he gets up and walks away. And as, it, as he's walking away, I look over and he goes, 14th Amendment. Uh, that's about, you know, and he wouldn't listen. So this is one of the biggest problems that we encounter, which is to get people to have a conversation, a chat, a discussion, not an argument, not a debate. That term, what it meant the day they wrote it, the day they ratified it, the day they put the Constitution into action in March 1789, whatever that through those three words meant then is what they mean today. What the Supreme Court I found to be really good at is broadly interpreting to whatever it wants to get. And so the Supreme Court cannot rule on a law that changes the cons contract, the Constitution. It's just wrong.